All right, who else has got one? Okay. Let's see here. Hi. I said that one. Okay. I think we will get one trailer for the Final Fantasy Re 7 Remake Part 2. Mm. Just yeah. one. It might be 45, it might be 30 seconds long, and it'll just be a logo, and we're like, hey guys, this game exists, and we'll be like, yeah, please give us more, we're so hungry for D, you know, for D, yeah, and, and, and um, it'll be one trailer, and that'll be all we get, <laughs> and they'll be like, what are we getting a release date? You'll be like, when it's ready, because fucking guys, anyway, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, we'll get one tiny update about Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two. It's just the 30 second trailer of the party walking from Midgar to the town of Calm. And that's yeah. it. Yeah, you can see that's distance. as far as they got. Yeah, they get slightly farther. They're like, oh, well, I've got there yet. But don't worry. We'll have the game at some point. In like a hundred something Nibbleheim. Yeah. It'd be the I'm Nibbleheim going to go the opposite phase. direction on that one, though. Yeah. I'm going to say that we get a release date for that this year. Ooh. All right. I think spring 2022 is entirely possible. They did say I it was going to be a lot quicker to start churning them out, right? If they know the direction they want to go. I assume that they have written a treatment for where the story goes now. Because it's kind yeah. of unwritten at this point. but Yeah, it could go basically anywhere. They, they've got the freedom. They, they built themselves a back door so they can escape the story at any point if certain events turn out to be too <laughs> unpalatable or unpopular or continuously emotionally traumatizing, I guess, if that's something that affects Oh, they are going to milk the emotional trauma for all it is worth, James. Oh, yeah, so no, they'll go the other way, but they're like, you know the thing you guys are expecting? We're going to crank it up to 11. Get ready to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope so because I'm somebody that doesn't know the story. And just recently, I was scrolling through. I think it was a YouTube comment section, and I swear I was just scrolling, 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 and really quick, I saw one little spoiler, like out of nowhere. It wasn't related to the video that I was watching, but there was a spoiler related to Aerith that I didn't want to see. <laughs> and so. Rhett hearing that i'm like i hope that a lot of this stuff that people think is coming is not gonna be coming you know brett it's legitimately totally wild to me that you had never heard that before like yeah, never, to never, say never, that never. that information like the that the key events of final fantasy 7 as the storyline for like 10 years was so deeply embedded in the collective uh, uh, gamer consciousness that to this day if I see somebody who like doesn't know how Final Fantasy 7 goes I feel like they were in some sort of a bunker for several years like I can't think of a second reason why somebody wouldn't know that but then here you are a person who organically did not know that until unbelievably recently that's amazing to me <laughs> Also, given the fact that some of my best friends growing up were big, big Final Fantasy fans, but I just never, wow. I don't wow. know, I never, I, I never got one of them for Christmas. I never got one for a birthday, nothing. Um, yeah, it was always something, though, FF7, you know, anytime anybody would talk about the best games ever, FF7 would come up and I would always be like, man, I would really like to check that out. So now it, it's pretty so cool the that the first way I get to experience it is this way, I think. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting perspective to have, too. Yeah. Um, because I'm actually shocked that the remake was so successful with people who had not played Final Fantasy VII, and they enjoyed it basically the same amount as people who had this ridiculous, uh, unassailable nostalgia. Nostalgia aside, man, it is just a very well-made game. Well-directed, well-composed. It's... it's yeah, it's so smooth. It's it's uh, you know, yeah, it's a good game. Hopefully, the second one improves on it. And 
I guess now that we're talking about Final Fantasy, you want another prediction for 2021. Maybe we get, hmm, I want to say a release date. Bold predictions. I'm going to say a release date for that Final Fantasy uh, 16, is it? Is that where we're at? 17? Yeah, 16 is the, what's coming 16, out. 16, yeah. Give me, yeah, give me a, a release date for that. Not as soon as Mar or March 2022. That's what you said, right, Paul? For, for spring. Spring part two. Spring, spring 20. Okay, so I'm going to say, ah, man. I don't know, 2023 for Really? That's pretty distant. Was, I'm going to say that, that that one's coming out this year. This year? But if it was going to be the, this like, year, wouldn't, wouldn't you think that they would have more information on it when they showed it off last time? Well, I mean, they, they did have quite a bit of information on it. Like, they didn't say a whole lot, but obviously the narrative is complete. The voice acting mm -hmm. is complete. Right. The combat looked relatively complete. The thing that didn't look that done was the polish on the graphics. Like the lighting didn't look right. Things like yeah. that looked like they were not there yet, which is something you'd expect in something that's in an alpha or early beta form. For me, I think that game could very reasonably come out this year. Yeah, fair. If it doesn't, it's because Square Enix has like they want to make sure that there's uh, the holes in their release calendar are as small as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like they're probably depending on how ready the game is, they might even be like picking their target. They're like, well, we got to drop it here because we got nothing else going on, and you know what I mean. They got some sort of like crazy mathematics at play yeah. for that. And just an aside, here's the beauty of that Final Fantasy VII spoiler red: that despite knowing the spoiler itself there's so much context and mm. surrounding mm. information in that whole scenario as yeah. it's definitely not ruined for you absolutely that's what i figured like based on the events from the first game i figured that uh, there was a lot of context missing there and you know if if something appears to be one way or that way in specific that we're talking about i figured that maybe not necessarily that is how things will end up or you know maybe there's a way back that i haven't seen yet i remember um james you were mentioning something about the black what was it you're mentioning some part of part of the story about the black uh black man, material i don't know yeah like i think it was that so maybe there's I have no clue. I'm excited to play the second part, though. Gotcha. Me too. I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised that that game didn't pop up on more game of the year lists. You know, I I can't think of anywhere I saw that actually gave it game of the year, but it had a such a massive impact on people when it came out. Got such good reviews. It's interesting that it just kind of fell out of people's minds that quickly. Yeah, it it was like, um, I think by the time we got Ghost of Tsushima, Final Fantasy VII was gone from people's minds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the tough was. thing about releasing in the first couple months of the year. 